The process of maturation may form two different types of stratified epithelium, them being the keratinized and the non-keratinized epithelium. The keratinized epithelium lines the masticatory mucosa comprising of the gingiva and the heart palate and also some parts of the specialized mucosa of the tongue. It consists of four layers or strata, namely the basal layer or the stratum basale, the prickle cell layer or the stratum spinosum, the granular layer or the stratum granulosum, and the corneal or the keratinized layer, otherwise called as stratum corneum. The basal layer is the lowermost layer consisting of cuboidal or columnar cells just above the basal lamina or the basement membrane. It consists of the progenitor and the maturing population that is responsible for continuous renewal of cells in the epithelium. The basal cells are attached to the connective tissue below with the help of hemidesmosomes. And ultrastructurally, it consists of tonofilaments packed or aggregated into bundles called tonofibrils. The next layer, that is the prickle cell layer, is so called because of the prickle like or the spiny appearance this layer has as a result of cells shrinking due to histologic preparations. As the cells shrink, it can be seen that the cells are joined by intercellular bridges, which are ultrastructurally known as desmosomes. The spinous layers form the bulk of the epithelium and are large ovoid to polygonal cells and there is a significant increase in size of the cells from the basal layers also accompanied by more protein synthesis in the form of conspicuous tonofibrils. An organelle called membrane coating granule or the lamellate granule also called as Odland body appears in the uppermost spinous layers. Now this is an elongated organelle with parallel lamellae and contains glycolipid. Cells in the granular layer are flat but have a greater volume than cells in the spinous layer. Cells in this layer also possess the lamellet granule and these lamellet granules fuse with the cell membrane and release their lipid content into the intercellular space between the granular and the corneal layer forming a permeability barrier. The granular layer is so called due to the presence of basophilic keratohyalin granules that are produced by ribosomes and these granules contain proteins called phlegrin and loricrin. These proteins along with another protein called involucrin form strong crosslinks with tonofilaments and this aggregation of these proteins with tonofilaments form an envelope called the cornified cell envelope inside the cells just below the plasma membrane of the granular cell layer and is an effective barrier to chemical solvents. Now the intercellular lipid content produced by the lamellar granules along with the cornified cell envelope form an effective water barrier. The corneal layer is eosinophilic microscopically and consists of flat hexagonal cells called squames that are dehydrated and have lost all their organelles and nuclei. This layer essentially consists of tightly packed tonofilaments cross-linked with disulfide bonds aggregated in a matrix of filagrin and would hence possess a dense eosinophilic appearance under the microscope. Corneal cells or squames are lost or shed actively and this process is called desquamation and once shed they are replaced by cells from the underlying layers. Now when the cells in the corneal layers have lost their organelles and nuclei, the stratified epithelium is referred to as an orthokeratinized epithelium. However, there are parts of the gingiva or the palate where the corneal layers have not lost all organelles and possess pycnotic nuclei and this pattern of maturation is called panakeratinization. As far as the non-keratinized epithelium is concerned, it lines about 60% of the oral mucosa that includes the buccal mucosa, labial mucosa, soft palate, alveolar mucosa, ventral surface of the tongue as well as the floor of the mouth. It consists of a basal and a prickle cell layer and the outer two layers are called the intermediate layer or the stratum intermedium and superficial layer or the stratum superficial. The basal and the spinous layers are similar to the keratinized epithelium, although the intercellular bridges in the spinous layer are not as visible as compared to a keratinized epithelium. Hence, some prefer to avoid the use of the term prickle cell or spinous layer and consider only three layers in the non-keratinized epithelium. The intermediate cells are bigger than the granular cells but have dispersed tonofilaments that are not aggregated into tonofibrils. Lamellate granules or membrane coating granules are present in the intermediate cells 
and is circular in contrast to the elongated granule in the keratinized epithelium. These granules also secrete lipid material into the intercellular space between the intermediate and the superficial layer but does not form as effective a barrier as the one in the keratinized epithelium. The intermediate cells may sometimes harbor keratohyaline granules. The superficial layer consists of flat cells that are not dehydrated unlike the keratinized epithelium, have lesser organelles and possess nuclei and dispersed tonofilaments. This layer is thus flexible and can withstand compression and other forces applied.